We recently visited Japan, which continues to be for us one of the most unique countries in the world. Tokyo was just named the safest city in the world and certainly is the cleanest and most polite. The Japanese people and their culture and Japan's important role in the world cannot be ignored. Over the next few weeks, we'll explore Japan's plans for revitalizing its economy, its world leadership in technology, and its vast and intriguing cultural depth. On this program, we'll learn about Japan's need to push out away from Tokyo and revitalize local and regional economies. We'll hear about strategies to attract young people to new jobs in these areas and plans to create the economic security for them to have larger families. We'll meet top officials, visit areas of Japan new to most travelers, and get a step closer to understanding the incredible spirit of the Japanese people. This is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. Peter Landers is Tokyo Bureau Chief for the Wall Street Journal. I spoke with Peter about Prime Minister Abe's three-pronged strategy to get Japan's economy moving forward. What's his grand strategy for rebooting the economy of Japan and making it a player once again? He talks about three arrows. Uh, the first is monetary stimulus. That means just flooding the economy with more cash, flooding the banking system with more cash to reduce interest rates, hopefully increase lending, increase uh, riskier investments when you're getting nothing on your uh, bank deposits. Uh, that may hopefully encourage people to invest in real estate. You do see a little bit more of that under Prime Minister Abe. Mm -hmm. So monetary stimulus by the Bank of Japan is his first arrow. Uh, the second arrow is fiscal stimulus. Uh, not so much as uh, it, it might seem, uh, but there has been government spending to stimulate the economy, more government spending to restore the areas in northeastern Japan that were hit especially hard by the mm -hmm. earthquake. Uh, new construction projects. And then the third arrow he talks about is structural reform. Uh, and it's a little bit vague what he means by that, but it could mean liberalizing the labor market. It could mean having special economic zones where regulations are reduced, uh, getting more women into the workforce. Mm -hmm. A lot of uh, agricultural opening, uh, trying to get Japanese uh, farmers to have a more competitive structure that would allow them to export more overseas. So the, the third arrow, is that a kind of the, uh, the revitalization or vitalization arrow that we're talking about? Is that a fair yes. term? Yeah, I mean, that's the, it's the aimed at doing so, yes, over the long term. I mean, I would make a distinction between short term and long term. I think uh, you know, a year from now, we will be seeing stronger growth. Minister Oshiba is in charge of promoting the vitalization of regional economies in Japan. His mission, confronting low birth rate and a declining population, an aging society, and challenging the country's Tokyo focus. His goal, to create a revived economy outside the capital city. You have a big portfolio, population decline, and to vitalize local economy. How do you do that? 
そうですね、うん、再生では yes, I opt not to use the word revitalization, but more recreation. That is because when I was、uh, a student in the junior high and senior high schools back in the 1970s, the population in Japan was continuing to grow in a linear manner, and the local areas were full of vitality. If you look at、uh, the, the local cities and local communities, from Hokkaido in the north to Kyushu in the south, in almost all of the local cities, you see、uh, a decline across the board.、Uh, if you look at、uh, the right in front of the railway stations,、uh, not many people there. Uh, and if you look, go to the shopping streets, all the shutters are closed on uh, the, uh, the shops. And if you go to uh, the villages, all are so、uh, exhausted and fatigued, so to speak. So there seems to decline everywhere、uh, in the local areas. So, decline of the rural areas, bad economic times. Move to the major cities, all cry out for new policies, huh? Exactly, you're right. So we have to create new jobs and move them out of the Tokyo area. How do we do that? About five years ago, I was the Minister for Agriculture. Uh, the fisheries and forestries, and I have、uh, for many, many years been engaged in matters of、uh, the farming, the fishing, and uh, uh, the forestry.、Uh, their production levels have gone down、uh, below、uh, the half the peak levels. Amongst all the countries in the world, I believe this is a country most uh, uh, appropriate to have farming and fishing and uh, uh, the forestry. But how to realize、uh, such a potential? How to draw out the capabilities of、uh, the such as the sectors is something that we need to think、uh, duly. And if we can do that, then we will be able to create jobs and increase income. Declining population. How do you encourage young people to have more children? There are all sorts of reasons why they are not able to get married or not able to have、uh, two or more children. But the biggest reason is they don't、uh, have enough income to sustain the marriage or to have、uh, two or more children. Looking at the social welfare,、uh, the programs、uh, in、uh, Japan, the emphasis has been placed、uh, more heavily on、uh, the senior citizens. Today,、uh, the older、uh, the people in Japan、uh, are perhaps、uh, the number one or the number two in the world when it comes、uh, to、uh, the life expectancy. So, as we finish, do you think that Prime Minister Abe, with your help, the government, the big employers, can get this country's economy moving forward? Unless we do that, I don't think、uh, a Jap Japanese economy or Japan as a country would、uh, be sustainable. So, this is a critical time. The LDP government、uh, in the past several times have taken on the challenge of、uh, revitalizing、uh, the、uh, local areas. But、uh, as you have also rightly pointed out, what is different、uh, this time is if we fail this time, Japan will no longer be sustainable. So the government right now has a very strong sense of crisis. You say this is a very serious time for Japan. How much time do we have? In order to revitalize the local areas and put a stop to the decline in population, and as much as possible to try to produce food and energy inside Japan, in order to achieve all these policy goals, what we need to see is the local communities and local governments to take initiative, take ownership, to revitalize the local areas. Those should be highly credited. And what the central government should do is just to keep to providing support in money, in human resources, and information to be provided. Those will be the only roles of all the central government. 
And uh, if we can, in five years from now, see such movements to be full-fledgedly happening in the local communities, I think that uh, that uh, would have uh, the been a good thing. So five years, I will give five years, uh, in that uh, those local cities would no longer uh, the backtrack and back at the pedal and uh, the mindset of the older people in the local communities need to be changed. So I think that we need to do that in five years. Actually, it may take uh, 20 years or 30 years. However, if we can make it to that extent uh, in just five years, then I think that uh, the job is well done. Five years. Hmm. Oh, it's only five years. To learn more about how Japan is developing its regional economies, we visited several new companies that are creating jobs in regions far outside of Tokyo and energizing the economy. Strawberries are Japan's favorite fruit, fish is a staple of the Japanese diet, and knitting seems to go hand in hand with mending fishermen's nets. Three entrepreneurs underscore the innovative spirit of the Japanese people. Are the strawberries are very popular in Japan? Do people love strawberries here? Uh -huh. Strawberry is the, uh, the top uh, popular uh, the fruit in Japan for 30 years. So when they say GRA, what does GRA stand for? General Reconstruction Association. So this is part of the government's revitalization effort. So that we collaborate with the government and we try to add uh, something to vitalize that the Japanese agriculture villages and vitalize the community which was hit uh, greatly by the, the great uh, the earthquake and the tsunami. So when that happened, what was your idea? My hometown is here, uh, this Yamamoto town. Uh, when the uh, big disaster happened, I was in Tokyo uh, that operating our own uh, IT uh, the corporation co company, but I didn't know the whether my parents were safe or not, so I came back and then uh, look at, the, at the, this area, uh, this uh, very uh, devastating site, uh, the very tragic scene. Though the, at the time, I felt that sense of mission uh, that, uh, that I had to do something something. Right after the disaster, I myself and that some traditional farmers uh, started to work uh, in a traditional way uh, to uh, reconstruct agriculture uh, the community. But if we uh, do that uh, tradition and the way of agriculture, it just get back to the original situation before the disaster, so that we had almost uh, nothing after disaster. So we think maybe uh, we should consider to make this area uh, that the number one strawberry uh, the growing area in the world. And after that, we collaborated with the, uh, the central government and government and that, uh, to consider to try to how to vigorate the Japanese agriculture uh, to uh, the make it number one in the world. So in the big picture, you're working with the government to work on new technologies for farming. Is that the mission of GRA? Talking about agriculture, we think about some kind of the craftsman, the technique, skill. Of course, the, the traditional ones, it's very important, but we try to uh, that put the science and technology into agriculture uh, to make that uh, agriculture a big uh, industry. Uh, the, through this activity, maybe some young people want to uh, come here to work in this local area, uh, which lead to the valorization of the community and also can increase that employment in this area. So we have the vision. Uh, so we are talking with the government in at the viewpoint of that uh, framework of the reconstruction, revitalization of the local community. So one of the keys to economic recovery for Japan is to grow the agricultural sector. Hmm? Uh, agriculture has less impact uh, to that economy uh, when we uh, consider that uh, short period of time. But for that the middle and uh, the long term period, I think that Japan's uh, that agriculture will help and support the, the Japanese economy greatly. I hear you've written a book. You're a famous author. Yeah. 
Actually, I'm not the famous other person. So without the disaster, I did not think about writing a book. But after disaster, uh, we think that we should keep the record how we restarted our work. We had the two plants at the near the sea, and also the two stores, and also the offices, and all my houses. Uh, but actually, uh, on the very day I was in the plant uh, close to the sea, but all the, uh, the facility were flooded away by tsunami. But the right after that, uh, the disaster, we started to evacuate. So that after that, at uh, the big vibration, the earthquake, we uh, began to evacuate so that all the staff were safe. And also that our staff helped my the elderly uh, the, uh, the, uh, the parents uh, to evacuate so that our family members are also safe. After that earthquake, it's about 40 minutes for the tsunami to come to the area so that everyone had the time to evacuate it to the higher ground. In this Kesenema city alone, 3,000 people lost their lives. Have you always been in the fishing business? Yes. When this company started, uh, that the company took care of the, uh, the fishing vessels at the time. But after I married at the, with my husband, uh, we began to uh, again engage in the kind of the processing of the fish. Processing of fish. So how does that work? Is there a, a plant where the processing takes place? Where is that plant? Before the disaster, our plant was in what we call the Shiomicho, just uh, in front of the, the sea. But after disaster, uh, the, now we had the plant at uh, the downstairs. Here? Hi. <laughs> so family business. Hi. And you're the boss. <laughs> Don't tell anyone. When you go into the other area with our cameraman, what will he see? What's happening there? In the plant, we are the cooking Pacific story, and then I take some process to make it safe, and then the, the, we pack the product. In that one room, we are the do the, the whole process from the, the cutting the Pacific story and the cook and the process and to the packaging, all the process. When the earthquake happened, I was working in the government of Bhutan, a small country in Himalaya, and I, I was working there. Uh, but when the earthquake happened, I felt like, uh, isn't it the time for me to work for my own country, not for uh, other countries? So I decided to come back to Japan and uh, work around this, you know, Tohoku area. And uh, just by chance, I came to this town and I met the people here and I was very much attracted because Kesenuma is such a small town in Tohoku. And, uh, I had the typical image of the rural area of Japan, like people are domestic, but people here is quite hunters, right? And the risk takers, and they put the money to build the, the big ships, big boats, and uh, go for fishing. So, so the people here are quite uh, unique uh, in Japan. So I was uh, attracted very much and I wanted to know more. So how did this, uh knitting business come about in this area? The first thing I, I wanted to do is to create the new industries uh, which could sustain even after the temporary uh, charity activities could go by, uh, leave. And uh, in order to create the new business, uh, I, I thought, what could we do? But the one constraint is that the ground was sinked uh, because of the earthquake mm -hmm. and we couldn't build anything so we couldn't do any business which we need to build factories for example uh, at the beginning so we need to start something we could start uh, without a big initial investment and knitting is you know you can start with two sticks yeah. and the yarns yes. so that was uh, something feasible at that moment mm -hmm. and moreover when we told this idea to the people here, uh, people told to us that, uh, oh, that's what we have been doing for a long time. Because it's a fishery town. Um, many people uh, knit the sweaters for fishermen. And also, interestingly, fishermen knitted the sweaters by themselves. Because it's deep fishery 
uh, deep fishery. So it takes like three months to to go to the, the place to fish. Mm -hmm. Then um, people have uh, the fishermen have the times. So as the time killer, they needed their own sweaters. Oh. So um, the people here are quite familiar with the culture of knitting. Mm -hmm. So it was the the key to start this business. I'm wondering if uh, the knitting has anything to do with like repairing uh, the fishing Fisherman. nets. Yes, uh, uh, not directly connected, yeah. but because of the the culture of uh, knit the fisherman's knit or repair the uh, net, uh, you know, people are from people are familiar uh, with knitting the, the behavior of knitting itself. You're knitting sweaters and selling them to whoever wants to buy, right? Yes. And how many people are involved in the knitting? Now uh, th uh, over 30, actually 35 knitters are working at the company, Kassinum Knitting. So now it is a full-fledged business, but how do people find out about you? At the beginning, uh, my business partner has his own website and he introduced us, uh, our story uh, on his website. And it was, it is quite popular, so it was the, you know, first ah. step. And after that, now, sometimes we are covered by media as well. Aha, uh -huh. here so. we are. <laughs> the city of Kobe, destroyed by a powerful earthquake 20 years ago, is a prime example of Japan's ability to rebuild, recreate, and revitalize. This is the 20th anniversary of a huge earthquake here. Uh, try to uh, tell us a little bit about the earthquake, the destruction, uh, the devastation of this entire city. So that was January 17th, 1995. And a huge earthquake suddenly uh, struck uh, this area uh, of Japan. And the earthquake uh, hit uh, this area at 5.46 a.m. That's when most people were still in bed and many people uh, got crushed under uh, the rubble of the collapsed building and died. And after that, that uh, as most buildings uh, were uh, made of uh, wood, and so the fire occurred and that burnt down uh, much of the part of the cities and that killed 4,571 citizens in total. And so all the lifelines, including water and electricity, were cut. During that time of the earthquake in Kobe, uh, our expressways were collapsed. And because of those devastations, the citizens had a real hard time. How about Kobe in the future? Where does it fit into a Prime Minister Abe's revitalization of the economy? So Kobe has just passed the 20 year mark after the major disaster. So it is time for us to go to the next stage. And the key to the next stage for Kobe uh, will uh, to be to develop uh, the biomedical cluster uh, even further. And so in Port Island of Kobe, uh, there are as many as 290 companies which have already invested. And, and that includes uh, the National Institute, uh, RIKEN, and there we have uh, the world uh, uh, the fastest supercomputer, K, and then which is a national project. And the national government has a project to replace uh, the fastest supercomputer with even faster computer uh, in the near future. And so through such uh, initiatives, uh, we would like to accelerate uh, research and development activities in Kobe and even advance uh, some uh, technologies uh, which are developed in uh, Kobe. And those findings uh, will be reflected in the new drugs or pharmaceutical products, which will uh, provide uh, uh, the uh, benefits uh, to, uh, to the, the health and welfare of the people. We have three key things uh, through which uh, we can make positive contribution to the world. Safety, uh, health and wellness, and disaster reduction.
For information about This Is America and the World and to watch all of our programs, visit our website, thisisamerica.net, and look for us on Facebook and Twitter. This Is America and the World is brought to you by the National Education Association, the U.S.-China Education Trust, and F.Y. Chang Foundation, guided by Ambassador Julia Chang Block, President. The League of Arab States, representing 350 million people in 22 member countries. Japan, history, hospitality, and advanced technology. Sharing tomorrow. The Petrolin Group, expertise with integrity in the fields of oil and gas, exploration and production, energy and infrastructure. The Rotondaro Family Trust. The Embassy Series, uniting people through musical diplomacy, presenting international artists in diplomatic settings. And Ventana Productions, television facilities, editing and distribution services. 